Think your cholesterol is high because of what you eat? You might be surprised. Let's challenge what you know about cholesterol-rich foods and uncover the real science behind five foods that get a bad rap. Eggs, those humble orbs found in nearly every kitchen, especially yolks, have been the subject of much debate and scrutiny over the years. For decades, they have long been blamed for high cholesterol, a concern that led many to limit or even eliminate them from their diets. The prevailing wisdom painted eggs as a dietary danger, a ticking time bomb for your arteries. But new research, conducted with modern scientific rigor, shows that for most people, eating eggs in moderation has little to no significant effect on blood cholesterol levels. The narrative is shifting, and it's time to reconsider the role of eggs in a healthy diet. Our bodies are remarkably adept at self-regulation. When you eat more cholesterol from dietary sources, your liver, that amazing metabolic organ, simply makes less cholesterol on its own to compensate. Only about 30% of people, often called hyper-responders, exhibit a different reaction. These individuals may see a rise in cholesterol levels after consuming eggs, but even then, the increase is often in the high-density lipoprotein, HDL cholesterol, which is considered the less harmful type and can even be beneficial. Beyond the cholesterol debate, yolks are nutritional powerhouses packed with essential nutrients like choline, crucial for brain health, vitamin D, vital for bone strength and immune function, and a variety of beneficial antioxidants. The real issue isn't the egg itself, but rather what you choose to eat with your eggs. So skip the bacon, the sausage, and excessive amounts of butter. Instead, pair your eggs with a colorful array of veggies and a slice of whole grain toast for a truly nutritious and satisfying meal. Don't fear the yolk, embrace its goodness. It's time to retire the outdated notion that eggs are the villain. They're not the dietary demon they've been made out to be. Shrimp, crab, lobster, and other shellfish delicacies. They've often been unfairly villainized due to their cholesterol content. For years, people have been wary, thinking shellfish will automatically raise their cholesterol to dangerous levels. The truth is, shellfish are relatively low in saturated fat, and saturated fat is the real dietary culprit when it comes to raising LDL, the bad cholesterol. It's more about the type of fat, not just the overall cholesterol number in the food itself. Interestingly, studies have shown that shrimp consumption may lead to a slight increase in both LDL and HDL, the good cholesterol. This often results in a balancing effect, mitigating the overall risk to your cardiovascular health. It's not just about the numbers, but the overall impact on your heart. However, preparation methods are key. Grilling or steaming shrimp, for example, creates a lean and incredibly nutritious meal. These methods avoid adding unhealthy fats. Beyond cholesterol, shellfish are packed with essential minerals and beneficial antioxidants, such as the powerful astaxanthin, known for its anti-inflammatory properties. So, don't let outdated myths prevent you from savoring these delicious and healthy sources of protein. Instead, focus on choosing healthy cooking techniques and consider the overall nutritional profile rather than fixating solely on the cholesterol number. When prepared thoughtfully, shellfish can absolutely be a valuable and enjoyable component of a heart-healthy dietary pattern. Cheese is often blamed for cholesterol, but the story is more nuanced. The unique cheese matrix, its mix of protein, calcium, and beneficial bacteria, may offset some effects of saturated fat. Studies show moderate full-fat cheese doesn't raise heart risk for most people. High calcium in cheese can even reduce fat absorption. Enjoy cheese in moderation, paired with whole foods, not as a processed topping. It's about balance, not banishment. Cheese can fit into a healthy diet, no need for guilt. Coconut oil is trendy but controversial packed with saturated fat. It raises LDL cholesterol more than plant oils. It also raises HDL, the good cholesterol, but we don't know if that cancels out the risk. Most health experts recommend using coconut oil sparingly. It's not a miracle food, but it's not poison either. For heart health, olive oil and other unsaturated fats are better choices. Use coconut oil for flavor, not as your main cooking fat. Moderation is key. Red meat's reputation often suffers, unfairly burdened by misconceptions and outdated nutritional advice. It's time to reevaluate its place in our diets. The primary concern stems from its saturated fat content, 
which has been linked to heart health issues in the past. But the story is more nuanced than a simple label. The key is understanding that not all red meat is created equal. There's a vast difference in nutritional profiles depending on the cut and how it's prepared. Lean, unprocessed cuts, like sirloin, offer a good source of protein and essential nutrients without excessive fat. Similarly, pork tenderloin, a surprisingly lean option, provides valuable protein and minerals. These leaner choices are significantly lower in saturated fat compared to their fattier counterparts, making them a healthier option. Processed meats, however, are the real problem. These are often loaded with sodium, preservatives, and unhealthy fats. Regular consumption of processed meats has been consistently linked to a higher risk of heart disease and other health complications. Emerging studies show that lean red meat, when consumed in moderation as part of a balanced diet, doesn't necessarily raise cholesterol levels any more than poultry like chicken, which is often considered a healthier alternative. The same holds true when compared to fish, another heart-healthy protein source. Ultimately, portion size and preparation methods matter significantly when it comes to the health impact of red meat. Aim for small servings, around 3, 4 ounces, to keep your intake in check. Load up your plate with lots of colorful, nutrient-rich veggies to complement your protein, and incorporate whole grains like quinoa or brown rice for added fiber and sustained energy. Red meat can absolutely be a part of a balanced and healthy diet, contributing valuable nutrients. The key is to choose wisely, opting for lean cuts and avoiding processed varieties. It's about prioritizing quality over quantity and making informed choices about the types of meat you consume. It's about a balanced approach, focusing on moderation and mindful consumption, not total elimination. We've busted some big cholesterol myths today. The real key is your overall diet pattern, not just one food or nutrient. Preparation, portions and food combinations matter most. Always check the facts and talk to your doctor about your unique needs. Knowledge is power. Use it to make choices that work for you. If you found this helpful, like and subscribe for more science-backed nutrition tips. Stay curious, stay healthy, and see you next time.